Hello and welcome to another Spectrum Geeks video. Thanks so much for clicking on this video and joining me. My name is Dale and in this video we're going to kind of revisit something we discussed a few years ago on does it make sense to have battery storage in your home in 2022 even if you don't have solar panels. So in true geek fashion this is a video I've really been excited about kind of doing some numbers and presenting this to you. Many people have asked on the old video that I did back in May 2019 if things have changed, if things make sense, and would I do an updated version on the whole story of does it make sense to have battery storage even if you don't have solar? Obviously the energy crisis and battery storage has got cheaper. So we've asked that on the YouTube video and to me on Instagram. So I've been doing some numbers because I've been thinking about getting some more batteries myself, but also specifically in this day and age, does it make sense to have battery storage if you don't have solar panels basically. So this is a kind of a quick revisor on where we were back in May 2019. Talk to you a little bit about some of the specifics and the caveats of this update video and then we'll jump straight into it. So back in May 2019 when I spoke about the battery storage solutions we were specifically talking around a Powerwall 2. That was the most common battery uh, available in the UK at the time and also energy tariffs based on octopus go was 14 pence per kilowatt for peak rate and it was five pence per, per kilowatt off peak and based on a typical uk household their annual electricity costs back then would have been about 650 pounds and the cost of you know power wall 2 was around eight thousand pounds that would give you 14 kilowatt hours of storage 13.5 kilowatt hours of usable storage and basically it made or the results were that it just didn't make sense to have battery storage it didn't make financial sense to have battery storage back then because the payback would be around nine years and two months until you've offset the cost of the electricity savings to paying for that power or two and even though the battery was probably still be working the warranty runs out after 10 years and it just doesn't make financial sense but now at the time of doing this video in april 2022 we do have an energy crisis, energy bills and electricity continues to rise. And also in the latest government update, they have once again uh, cut VAT on the installation of energy products. So basically if you're having solar panels installed or batteries installed, they will have no VAT on them uh, for the time being. Obviously we don't know when that's gonna change. So that now is kind of like an opportune moment to look at battery storage again, because Batteries have reduced in price a lot. There's a lot more variety of battery available. And obviously the, the reduction in VAT also makes sense. And obviously those electricity costs keep on going up. Um, let's see if it makes sense. So we're gonna base things on the same kind of criteria. Did a little bit of searching. Energy costs are roughly, or energy use I should say, is still roughly the same as it was back in 2019. Obviously we've had some variables with COVID and uh, families working from home and what have you, but the number still kind of makes sense. We're not going to look at the Tesla Powerwall 2. We are going to look at the Give Energy batteries. They are a, a pretty popular battery and competitively priced. There are obviously other options and you should look into those yourself. Um, so the pylon batteries tend to be the best at price per kilowatt hour, but you know, depends on aesthetics and things. Um, you, know, you can do your own research on some batteries that cost more and cost less, but we're going to go with the Give Energy option because it's a, a pretty popular battery and you know, a reasonable cost. We're gonna stay with um, the Octopus Go tariff, because I still think that that is a, a really good tariff to be on, especially if you have electric vehicles, or in this case, you know, battery storage, and you wanna have a good off-peak charging cost. Uh, full disclaimer, I've been with Octopus Energy for ages. I still recommend the Octopus Go tariff. If you do switch to them with the link uh, down in the description, both you and I will get 50 pounds credit to our bill, but that's not why I'm recommending them, because of the little kickback. Um, I still think that their tariff makes a lot of sense. And that's what we're going to base our numbers around the same as we did last year. Well, actually, 2019. So let's kick things off. So as mentioned, we've had the, the reduction in that general cost of a battery storage has come down from the 8,000 that we spoke about with um, the Powerwall 2 uh, back in 2019. So again, we're going to look at two options with the Give Energy uh, battery. So most battery storage uh, options you're going to need a separate inverter there's only a couple of batteries that have the inverter included 
and obviously that puts the price up of that battery solution anyway. So you need an inverter. That's what's gonna enable you to, you know, transfer the energy from the battery into your house and obviously also be able to charge it. I recommend going for a five kilowatt hour inverter. That means that basically you can you know, pump five kilowatts in and get five kilowatts out in terms of usage. If you wanna reduce the cost a little bit, you can just go for a three kilowatt one. You need to decide what you think um, your usage options are. And we're gonna look at two options. One with just the 8.2 kilowatt hour battery and another one with also the 5.2 kilowatt hour battery as well, because based on the um, average household in the UK, you're using just over 12 kilowatt hours per day. And with losses and what have you, um, you know, that larger battery setup is gonna basically cover all of your uh, energy usage for your house in the day. So that's kind of where we're setting off from. So Optimus Go tariff as of April, 2022, the, the rough estimated cost of the Give Energy uh, inverter and batteries installed into your house. And let's see how this is going to work in terms of cost savings and payback. So as mentioned, the average house in the UK uses 4,648 kilowatt hours per year, which equates to 12.73 kilowatt hours per day. Obviously, yours may be less, yours may be more. Yes, Darren, I'm looking at you. I know you use hardly any electricity, but you need to work out these own numbers for yourself. But this is just a general uh, average family in the UK uh, and their energy consumption. So that's what we're basing our numbers off. If we look at the current Optimus Go and the 10 month fixed uh, option, just to give you some comparisons, we're gonna work from the Optimus Go, but just give you a, an indication of what electricity prices look like at the time of doing this video. So Optimus Go is currently 34.43 pence per kilowatt hour during peak time. Off peak is 7.50 pence per kilowatt hour and a standing charge of 44.48 pence. And if for some reason you decided you wanna be on the Optimus 10 month fix, their peak charge is 40.49 pence per kilowatt hour and the off peak charge is 27.93 pence per kilowatt hour and the standing charge is 44.57 pence per kilowatt hour. Now we're not gonna worry uh, about the standing charge in our numbers because whatever energy provider you go with, there's gonna be the standing charge. So we're just gonna focus on the peak and off peak costs specifically with the Optimus Go tariff. So if we look at a standard house setup, as we mentioned, their annual usage and going for the five kilowatt uh, give energy inverter with the 8.2 kilowatt hour battery and the 5.2 kilowatt hour battery, this is how things stack up. So as a reminder again, so we're using 4,648 kilowatt hours per year based on the peak rate energy cost on the Octopus Go tariff, that would mean our electricity costs without any battery would be 1,600 pounds and 30 pence. So that's our kind of standard cost if we're on the Go tariff but didn't have any batteries or solar or anything like that. So now we have these two batteries, so the 8.2 and the 5.2. So we've got 13.4 kilowatt hours of battery storage. With that five kilowatt inverter, we can easily fully charge that battery in the four hours of off-peak energy cost that you have with the Go tariff. Um, so again, we're only paying 7.50 pence per kilowatt hour during that off-peak. So we would fully charge both of those batteries and that would cost us only one pound and five pence for that overnight charge. Now, so we do that every single night for the entire year. That means it's cost us 366 pounds and 83 pence per year to um, charge those batteries and then use that energy every day. Worst case, assuming we're fully depleting them. So you don't have to be a mathematician to realize that that number is less than 1,000 600 uh, pounds and 30 pence. In fact, that's a saving of 1,233 pounds and 47 pence saving per year, which is pretty amazing, but you're not saving anything until so you've covered the cost of that initial outlay of the inverter and the batteries. So what does that mean? So with that 13.4 um, kilowatt hours of battery storage and the five kilowatt inverter, the payback would be four years and six months. So after four years and six months, you're now quids in. You're 
100% saving all of that money every year moving forward. You've got 10 years unlimited uh, cycles on those batteries. Uh, and based on my experience, they're gonna continue running way past those 10 years. Yes, it's slightly reduced capacity, but it's fine because um, you're still gonna cover most of your costs. Um, and I think if you've got the money, that payback of four years and six months, you know, it, it's a no brainer to me. I think it makes, um, <laughs> it makes sense that you're gonna be saving because energy costs are gonna keep going up, I think, definitely, definitely in the short term, but I think long term as well. I think even in the month of March, we saw an increase from 30 pence to 34 pence on the Octopus Go tariff, as an example. So things continue to go up. But you might be thinking, yeah, that's great, but I don't have um, 5,639 pounds for that, you know, 13.4 kilowatt battery setup. Uh, but I think I probably could rustle together around three and a half thousand pounds to have the 8.2 kilowatt hour battery setup. So what does that mean? Does it still make sense? Is it still worth it or not? So let's look at those numbers. So the 8.2 kilowatt hour battery storage is going to again, estimate us costing around 3,864 pounds. So a little bit more than I mentioned there in terms of three and a half thousand pounds, but not too badly or, or too much, I should say. So again, just to revisit, our annual electricity cost at peak rate would have been 1,600 pounds and 30 pence. If we have an 8.2 kilowatt hour battery storage set up, then um, obviously we can't do all of uh, our energy uses from off peak because it's only 8.2 and we're using around 12.7 or whatever it was. So we'd fully charge that battery as much as we could in the four hours. So it'd be fully charged at 8.2 kilowatt hours and that would have cost us 62 pence. And then during peak, we will actually draw some from the grid during peak time and that would cost us £1.56 for our peak energy usage and that would mean that for the year we'd pay £795.70 for the year. So again, still a significant saving over the £1,600 that we would have spent. In fact, that is a saving of £804.60 per year, which I still think is pretty amazing. Yes, not as much um, as when we had the larger battery capacity, but it hasn't cost us as much either. So how long would it take us to pay back if we just had that 8.2 kilowatt hour battery setup? The answer is only a couple more months, four years and eight months until we paid back the cost of that five kilowatt inverter and 8.2 kilowatt battery storage. So I think if you've got the money and again, granted, you know, just under 4,000 or just under 6,000 is a lot of money. Um, and again, four and a half years, um, you know, is a reasonable amount of time. But I think, you know, if you can, if you do have the money available, I think it does make sense. And the advantage of batteries is you can take them with them if, if you move house. Um, again, you're gonna have some additional cost in terms of, you know, uninstalling them and reinstalling them in a new property. But you can take batteries with you. It's not like solar where it's, I mean, you could take solar with you if you're, you know, someone who likes to punish yourself, but batteries are, are much easier um, to have removed and moved with you for your new house. So it is something that's gonna keep on giving. So I hope it helps. It's amazing how things have changed since, you know, 2019 to 2022, we've gone from, you know, 19 and a little bit years to four and a half years. It, it's amazing and I think as these costs go up you know each month over the next few years that this cost it is coming down so I hope it's helped please leave comments down below if you've got any feedback any additional questions I'll do my best to read them and respond as always thank you very much for watching if you haven't already please like the video consider subscribing to the channel there's all sorts of things on here that hopefully you'll find interesting but that's it take care of yourself until the next time goodbye for now